Yeah. We can just we can just move well, we yeah, can just move it. Yeah. We won't do it tonight. We'll just move it to another Calgary. meeting, another Cal South meeting, Calgary. which might be about a month from now. Fifteen thousand, maybe. Yeah. Okay, maybe. Yeah. And they can do on demand as. Just well, you want to check if they've done it, but they were okay. working on it. They know they're working on it. They're yeah. close to Calgary. So they did all the they did all right. the uh, background. Okay. Well, I have to start. I, we actually have to start There's the council meeting now. Seven o'clock. So right. We, we, we yeah, the contact community seems to suggest difference. it would be a lot. Okay, so we will hold. We will hold on that. Okay. Yeah. Yes, but I actually have to go because the council meeting is starting. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah, so she said, let's move it to the next hour. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that. Thank you. Okay, folks, it's 7 o'clock, and uh, thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. This is our first night that we've had um, a group of people attend a council meeting. This large, anyway, we've had a couple of people in here for uh, different other uh, meetings that we've had in the last couple of weeks, but this is our first uh, endeavor into getting a, what I would call a full council chamber, right, Sarah? And uh, on behalf of myself and council, we just want to let you know how appreciative we are to see everybody back and participating, and thank you very much for taking the time to come out tonight. I know that uh, some of you are here for a very good reason. In fact, all of you are. And I'd like to start uh, by reading our Aboriginal acknowledgement. And we would like to acknowledge the land of which we are gathered is the traditional territory of the Tanaha, Silix, and Sinex peoples, and is home to Métis and many diverse Aboriginal persons. We honor their connection to the land, rivers, and respect the importance of the environment to our strength as a community. And with that, I'd like to ask Council if for a motion to adopt the agenda with the uh, deduction of number eight, which was delegations. We don't have any delegations tonight, so if we have a mover, Councillor Renwick, Councillor Charwood, second. Questions or comments? <coughs> All in favor? Carried. Thanks very much. Um, public participation. So we have a 15-minute uh, section at the front end of the meeting here where if there's somebody in the public that wishes to come up and speak to council, you have um, you have this opportunity now. You just come up to that table there, let us know your name and where you live, and you're welcome to address council if you wish. Okay, so we'll move on then to the presentations. <coughs> and tonight we start up... Sorry? Oh, the minutes, I beg your pardon, yeah. Um, minutes of the previous meeting, I beg your pardon. On November the 23rd, 2021. Moved, Moved by Councillor Woodward, second by Councillor Lochtenberg. All in favour? Carried. Thanks very much. So we're on now to the um, Recognition and Achievement Awards. And we have to be a little bit cautious with the masks. Um, if we keep social distance, you can, when you come up for your, your award, you can... Take your mask off if you wish for your picture, whatever. So uh, we we'll start off with the first award tonight is um, recognition of uh, Michael Jessen. Hmm. And I believe his daughter's here and wife Carol. Hopefully. Okay, good. Welcome. And uh, you're welcome to come up. Come on up. This is Caitlin there and Carol. Oh, yeah. oh, perfect. Um, I want to say to start off, I think I have a written piece here, and it starts off saying, Council is sad to hear the passing of Michael, and we were, because uh, we all know any of us that have been involved in the community over the years that, that he was a, a champion for the environment, a champion for our community, and a council member mm -hmm. as well. So we give a lot back to his community. Um, for his, his whole life, really, mm -hmm. when you think about it. Uh, so to say we were saddened by his passing is, is an understatement. <clears throat> Council was saddened to hear the passing of Michael Jessen this year, and we would like to take this opportunity to recognize his vigorous accomplishments and contributions to our community. 
As some of you will recall, Michael served as one of the city's youngest councillors ever elected in the 70s. We thought you were one of the youngest youngest. <laughs> He served on the Provincial Council for 2008 to 2013. He was an RDC care recycling coordinator for 10 years and served as a Nelson volunteer director for the BC Lung Association and for, for a number of years. Michael owned and operated one of the first vegetarian restaurants in Nelson in the 80s, the Preservation House. <coughs> that was a big leap of faith, wasn't it? Well, yeah. That's what you meant? Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Michael gave much of his time to the pub, to public service and accomplished much. He will be missed. City Council has made a donation in the, in the memory of Michael to the Osprey Community Fund. And we have a plaque here for you. Thanks very much. To Sarah, bringing this forward. And this is a, a plaque and it's a cert certificate of recognition from Nelson City Council presented on behalf of Michael. Mm -hmm. uh, Ginger's going to take a picture, which you'll be welcome, you're welcome to have a copy of it. Now, uh, just before you go, if you want to say a few words, you're welcome to do so. Mm -hmm. Or just say thank you. Yes. Uh, you're welcome. And it's, it's unfortunate, and you see this so often that um, I know Michael got a lot of accolades over the years, but I wish we could have done this sooner. Mm -hmm. Really. So, anyway, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> now some baseball association. Jim, say good day. Are you here tonight, Jim? No, Come on up, my friend. Here. Come on. You and the rest of your motley crew. There you go. Come on. Dwayne Sorensen, yeah. president. Dwayne, uh, uh, Jim, thanks very much. Uh, I remember talking with you two characters when you came to see me here about three, four years, years ago, yeah, and wondering if it was possible to, to do all these upgrades that you did. And I noticed in our, in our little bit of history here on preamble, we neglected to put in Lions Park, which, you know, you were a huge That's contributor started, to. Yeah. That's where it all started. So, um, Council is recognizing Nelson Baseball for its unbelievable work the organization has accomplished at the Queen Elizabeth Field. I don't know how many of you have seen that field or driven by there recently, but it's just unreal what, what's yeah. happened there. Great job. <clears throat> over the past few years, Nelson Baseball has raised over 300000 to complete the overhaul of the field, which was in dire need of renovation. Nelson Baseball was able to secure funding from the RDCK, the City of Nelson, the Columbia Basin Trust, BC Tire Stewardship, stewardship uh, through Cal Tire, along with a $117,000 grant from the Blue Jays. So don't be afraid to turn on TSN and watch the Blue Jays once in a while. <laughs> Pay back a little. The work uh, has um, included a new uh, warning track, foul poles, outfield fence, and a backstop. The rebuild of the infield, the dugouts, the batting cage, new benches, new sod, and equipment building, and a new digital scoreboard, which looks fantastic, Jim. For anyone who has to see this amazing work, please go see it again. The organizations like Nelson Baseball are, are invaluable assets to the city of Nelson and to all of our, all of our community. <coughs> and we would like to take this opportunity to sincerely thank you for the work you've done. Jim, I have to say, when I talked to you, to, when you gentlemen, when you first came to speak to me, um, I thought, holy God, that's a big undertaking. But you know, it was clear that you had a passion. Both of you had a passion for that project and for Lions Park, and I, I'm going to give you a second or two to speak to this yourselves, but it appears to me as though your numbers have exploded in Nelson Minor Baseball because of the work you've done. So if you want to take a moment to... Yeah, very quickly, um, Nelson Baseball can't take a lot of credit for this. We run the organization as a group, but this man is the guy that drove that project. He put 6,000 hours of his own time into this project over the last three and a half years which is equivalent to pretty much a full-time job every year. Mm. So there's not a lot of people that can pull off that, but what it does show you is what one person can do mm. when they're driven to get something done. And, and we had to rattle a few cages here and there in town, but we got done what we needed to do. And like Jim said, when we first came to the table, it was like, oh my goodness, yeah. We've heard these kind of things before. <laughs> so 
when people come to council and you've heard these things before, it can be done. And so Jim is the one that gets the credit for this one. We all worked with him and supported him, but he's the guy that drove this project. And it's yeah. Been great. yeah, I've driven by there. Uh, mind you, I kept going. But uh, <laughs> Jim would be out there when it was 40 degrees. He was still out there. Do something up the field. Do you want to say a few words, Jim? Because you deserve to. No, I'm not going to speak about it. I'd like to make a correction. The okay. number you said, 300,000, yeah, that's, that's actually 420. I wouldn't be surprised. I thought that was going to be I can't stand when people get their numbers incorrect. <laughs> Thank you. All right, gentlemen. On behalf of City Council, we'd like you to have this certificate. And thank you very much for your hard work. Right. And uh, as uh, Dwayne said, like there are no bad ideas, right? So that's one of the things that we take a lot of pride in around the council table is we have presentations here on a regular basis from different groups in the community and the surrounding community, and they're all welcome to come, make their presentations, and we we. Uh, take all of them seriously because uh, as an example with the baseball association you know an idea can just sort of blossom and all it takes is uh, just a little bit of encouragement sometimes from local government um, and the next one is very similar and this one's for the nelson Dave Ray rotary club and of course any of us that know uh, anything at all about rotary they have a lifetime of service and lauren how long has rotary been in existence Rotary itself, John, has been in existence since 1905, and it's been in Nelson since 1922. 1922. So the Nelson Rotary Club will be celebrating their centennial next summer. <laughs> so the Nelson Rotary Club, as Lawrence said, is celebrating its centennial next summer. And uh, for those of you who are not Rotary members, they meet every week. And uh, I was a Rotary member for quite a few years. And I can tell you right now, they have projects going on all the time. We're just going to we're just going to celebrate one tonight. But there's a number of projects between the Janus Your Club, the Noon Club, and between the Daybreak Club. They have a number of projects in the community. So, Council would like to recognize the Daybreak Rotary Club for its amazing work <clears throat> and the organization has done to Rosemont Multi Generational Park Project. And this project, for those of you who don't know is uh, up in the Rosemont, the art given Rosemont Park. And of course the skate park was part of the project, but this is significant to the uh, multi-generational park project. This is the second phase. From the beginning, the Rotary Club spearheaded this project, which consists of a new multi-generational park with a number of features for children. And the vision was to enhance the use and accessibility for people of all ages. Rotary raised significant funds and successfully lobbied the city to support this project. But I'll tell you, they lobbied the city already. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Public Works were your partners, right? Yes. They really got to on that. <clears throat> um, the Rotary, Rotary the, uh, beginning in 2020, the organization began to install the multi generational playground. The park includes wheelchair accessible walk, walkway around the playground and through the forest. New benches and picnic tables are going to be installed in the spring, along with a, a shared shelter. While the project receives support from council, it is really the Rotary Society that has spearheaded this project and made it happen. Mm -hmm. This has created a place where family members across generations will be able to gather and spread, spend quality time together. City Council is proud of the valuable work that our Rotary Clubs of Nelson do for our community. And if either one of you wanted to speak to it, Meg, did you want to say a few words? I'm sorry, but I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, Meg. Please, you're more please. Than yeah, you're more than so we came to you and uh, requested resolution and support yeah. of, uh, of phase one and phase two, which was a playground, which is in place and uh, very, very busy, which delights us to, uh, to join the skate park and the bike pump park that was there already. And uh, we then, with phase three, have purchased already the uh, wheelchair accessible picnic tables and park benches that will go along the now paved walkways that do meander through the forest. And we'll be coming to you in spring, heads up, <laughs> with a request for support for phase three, which is a spray park. So there's not that much room for a spray park, but we're hearing that the children are way too hot 
playing up there and they can't get to the lake. So we're going to work towards funding the spring park. Nice. Oh. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah nice. and for those of you, those of us who've lived in Nelson for a long time know that that particular part of town needed facilities for young yes. and old yes. people as well. And so the spray park's a wonderful idea. So with that, Meg and Lauren, thank you both very much for your commitment and dedication to our community and the road of daybreak. Oh, you got a couple of phones. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Thanks, Ginger. You're there you go. Lauren, did thank you want to add a so few much. words? Uh, well, just again, as was said earlier, uh, the person who has spearheaded this one, it's been a Rotary Club project, but I've got to give full marks to Meg. Uh, for all the work that she's done, the fundraising. Uh, Meg, you've got the numbers, but I believe uh, the, the playground itself turned out to be, what, a quarter million dollars? All together with, with the paving and, and all that stuff. It was, uh, it was a major undertaking. Uh, we've had a lot of support uh, from various organizations and, and the community at large in the city of Nelson. Uh, we're very, very grateful for that. And as Meg says, we're not finished yet. We're really <laughs> looking forward to, uh, to getting the rest of this done. Nice. Thank, you. Nice. Thank you so much. Uh, I was wondering if Lauren can confirm whether or not he was part of the original starter of the Rotary Club. <laughs> I was one of the first members. I am a charter member of the Happy Daybreak, Daybreak Club. Club. There's only two of us left at this point. Oh, there you go. <laughs> now, I'm Colin, as you, some of you can hear, some of you can't see him like we can. But uh, Colin's actually in Toronto. Um, and he's chiming in tonight because Colin, I want to thank you as well because both of these organ, all these organizations so far that have been up here tonight, um, Colin McClure has been a big part in helping them get some projects off the ground. So um, with that is uh, John Armstrong and Bernie Zimmer here from the CU Friendship Society. I think they are. And this is another unbelievable project at Cottonwood Park. But, uh, today these two gentlemen here are spearheading, but there's a long litany of people that came before you and, and helped get this project off the ground. Council is pleased to present a sustainability leadership award to the Nelson Suju Friendship Society. The society was founded as a volunteer organization in 1987 to support the sister city relationship between Nelson. As we all know the society has done fantastic work at the park and the garden on the west side of Cottonwood Creek. This work includes a friendship gate, stone steps, two viewpoints, new garden beds and pathways, and a hydroelectric heritage work. This work has been heavily supported by the City of Nelson, the Columbia Basin Trust, and the, the work the society has done has been so successful that they've been invited to it, advise the Castle Garth community Communities and Bloom Committee as they are starting to build a sister city garden in Castlegar. In addition to this outstanding work on the park, the Society also organized exchange visits to Japan. City Council wants to thank the Suzhou Friendship Society for their outstanding contribution to our community. And Sarah, you've got the... Uh, yeah, there's money attached to this too, folks, so... Yeah. And you get... Uh, Checks, 1500 of them? 1150. Pardon? 1150. 1150, sorry. So there's a check for $1,150 that helps you with your work. Thank you. And there's a plaque here. And in a moment, you're more than welcome to say a few words if you wish. Thank you. Now, any of you that haven't been down to witness this garden any time of year, it's just beautiful. And the piece on the hydro, you might want to touch on that a little bit. That's mm. on the opposite mm -hmm. side of the yeah. creek, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, either one of you. Start sure, okay. Start. So uh, we're not up to uh, celebrating our centennial yet, but next year is our 35th anniversary. Uh, and as you said, uh, Mayor Dooley, there are many people who have come before, and we just wanted to take a minute to, to acknowledge some of those um, and their contributions to Nel Nelson's cultural strengths and to creating a safe and welcoming, beautiful little part of our community down in Cottonwood Falls Park. Um, and the first is this former Mayor Gerald Rotering, who in 1987 saw the value of having a, a sister city across the ocean in Japan and initiated the sister city agreement. And in 2017, still very enthusiastic, um, Gerald joined our multi-generational exchange group uh, to go to Izushi to celebrate our 30th anniversary. Um, 
June Spearman and Brent Cross are two of many people who worked over the years to provide opportunities for global friendships for uh, young people and their families here in Nelson and in Izushi through cultural exchanges at home stays. Um, there's lots of you know middle-aged people now who are you know started in that program and, and made connections with Japan as kids thanks to to people like uh, June and Brent and many others. Uh, Jim Sawada, our own uh, elder. Um, envisioned the creation of a, a garden down there, a, friend, a sister city friendship garden, and he um, recruited and led a group of enthusiastic supporters uh, to raise money and to build the garden. And we have pictures of people carrying big rocks around down there. Um, Bernie and I have done some of that too, but Jim is still active in the garden. He was down last week tying up our new bamboo plants. And um, finally, a name that you might not know is that of Hiro Okusa who was the Vancouver landscape designer who designed the Friendship Garden back in 2003 and 2005. And uh, Hiro returns regularly, voluntarily, to prune the cherry and, and maples almost every year. And uh, you know, anyone who goes down there and enjoys the peacefulness of the garden is benefiting from, from Hiro's design. Mm. And um, so we want to thank those people, and there's many others too, but we'll, we'll stop with that. But just, I just want to finish on a little aside about Hero. Um, you mentioned uh, the uh, garden in Castlegar, uh, and Hero's been uh, advising on that. Um, he and his associates have also finished another Japanese garden, and that's next to the international terminal at the Vancouver International Airport. So if we ever get a chance to travel again internationally and you're there, you can have a look at Hero's other garden. <laughs> But in the meantime, you can go to Cottonwood Falls oh. Park. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are here also because of our many members and volunteers. This award would not have been possible without their ongoing enthusiastic contributions to the society and the park and the garden, including this year's Weedy Wednesday work parties. We'd also like to acknowledge and thank the City of Nelson both council and city administration, uh, and especially parks and public works for their support over many years. We are looking forward to continuing our very positive relationship with the city as Cottonwood Falls con Park continues to develop. We very much appreciate receiving this award. Mm. Thank you. Thanks, gentlemen. So we have George Chandler and Stephen Creepney, is that right? Oh, close enough. Close enough, Stephen? Creepney. Creepney. Creepney, okay. Uh, from Nelson Nest. Come on up. I think I just have to. Usually you just. Uh, there we go. Oh, you don't have to. I'm smiling. <laughs> I know that's the trouble with the dark grass. You know, to smile with your eyes. You can tell when people's eyes were shining, I guess. Anyway, welcome to both of you. And you. Council is pleased to present a Sustainability Leadership Award to the Nelson Nest Lab. The Nest Lab was created to bring together diverse Nelson stakeholders to collaborate on community climate action. The idea to develop this lab emerged from a series of roundtables hosted by Nelson at his best and the West Kootenai Eco Society in 2019. Mm. Currently, the lab is in phase two and is helping the city implement a community action that aligns with the city's climate action plan, Nelson Next. This year, the lab raised 61,000 in grants to continue funding the lab. It has worked on the development of four initiatives that support the aspirations and outline in Nelson Next, like, neighbor, like Nelson Neighborhood Vehicle, and low impact transportation map. The lab has also represented, uh, presented at Selkirk College, a TEDx event which has led to the interest from communities in the East Kootenays about creating their own nest labs. More than ever this year, our region has experienced the impacts of changing climate, and this highlights the importance of working with the nest lab in their good work. Nelson Council wants to thank the nest lab for their outstanding contribution to our community and hopes the lab will continue to work that has started on and just you to this table but thank you very much for your contribution so far mm -hmm. and we have an award for you and once again there's a check goes with it 
and uh, either one of you or both of you are willing to save which save your words if you wish. You're more than welcome. Mm -hmm. You can take your mask off too. Huh? Oh yeah, if you want. Oh, yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's better. Sure. <laughs> I'm a person. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I would honestly just like to really thank the 22 participants who, who made the Nest Lab possible, uh, plus the counselors here at the table who have helped out tremendously, uh, the convening partners, which were Nelson, uh, City of Nelson, Nelson at its best, uh, Selkirk College, and uh, CAST. Um, well, there's so many things to thank. Uh, I, I just really want to thank Council for your courage and foresight in creating the position for a climate change coordinator. I mean, we had these uh, community-led roundtables that started, but if Kate Letizia had not been in place, I don't think this lab would have continued or even started because we didn't even know what a lab was, frankly. We were looking for a way to help citizens get engaged because taking action is the antidote to grief and despair. And it's been wonderful to have this partnership and the climate department has grown with the city of Nelson and uh, I think it's a wonderful partnership. And I want to thank some of you who came to that initial meeting back in May 2019. And we didn't know what was going to happen and here we are. Serendipity. So lovely. Thank you. Another good idea. Another good idea. Another good idea. When thank summer. you. Yeah. And, and again, just I'll, I'll actually just to piggyback on that, the Nelson Next Community Climate Action Plan. Like, yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's, keep, let's keep moving on those ambitions. Thank you. Thank I can you. see you're the sheriff in town. My yes. son made this one. Okay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> um, I think Joy, are you? Yeah, totally. <laughs> All right, so I just skipped the page here. Uh, Stephanie. Stephanie Myers, come on up. I'm sure many of you know and recognize Stephanie. She's been kicking around Nelson for quite some time. How long have you lived in Nelson now? 15-ish years. Yeah, seems to pop up in, in the strangest places sometimes. <laughs> so the council is pleased to present the Sustainability Leadership Award to Stephanie Myers. Stephanie embodies what makes what it means to give back to your community with her work and her volunteer efforts. <clears throat> Stephanie works for the city's, Stephanie's work works for one of the city's valued uh, social sector organization, Nelson Cares. Woohoo! <laughs> all your fans are here today. <laughs> she also works for the Touchstone Museum as a public programmer. However, it is really Stephanie's volunteer efforts that we want to recognize tonight. Stephanie is a member of the City's Culture Development Committee and the Heritage Working Group. She also spent many hours volunteering for the Kootenai Pride and helping to organize the Pride Parade. She <clears throat> is a board member for Seeds Nelson, that's the Seniors Economic Environmental Development Society. Mm -hmm. She volunteers at the Kootenai Co-op Radio, helping out with the Kootenai Morning Show and the fundraising efforts. She is also a co-vice president of the Canadian Federation of the University of Women. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <that's>... I'm <laughs> sure there are, there are a few other things we could, we have missed about Stephanie, but she's an amazing background of volunteering for our community. And City Council wishes to st thank Stephanie Myers for her outstanding contribution to the City of Nelson. Do you. Nothing wrong with it. Have you spent it already? Yeah. <laughs> 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 thank you. Uh, so, do you want to say a few words, Stephanie? Um, yeah, I just want to thank um, Council for putting me forward for this um, award. I really appreciate it. I've had a crap day, so this is my <laughs> uh, Sorry. <laughs> um, and yeah, the like staff has been super supportive of all of my late permit applications and parks department and planning and all that sort of stuff so i really appreciate that and i like doing what i do i've got great employers that 
give me the freedom to have a schedule that allows me to volunteer as much as I want to. And how, by yeah. the way, how is Seeds doing? Good. We have a great new board. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah, super good. excited. Good stuff. Awesome. Right. awesome. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Steph. Thank you. <laughs>
uh, costs are going are skyrocketing. So there's some of the residents at Ward Street Place who, you know, run into financial difficulty out of time. They come, they have crisis in their lives, like we all do. So this fund is going to, th this award is going to seed that fund, mm. and there'll be more information about that coming out in the press release, release and that sort of stuff. The real winner here, the the building is gorgeous, but the real winner is the community that lives in Ward Street Place. It's created an incredibly strong, resilient, uh, self-sufficient community there. Um, far better than was there 10 years ago, 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for, you. for this mm -hmm. recognition. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I don't want Ron to go too fast. Just a minute, Ginger. OK. Um, Ron, give us a little bit of an idea of the footprint of Nelson Cares and Nelson. I'm putting you on the spot a little bit here, but most um, people don't realize the extent of your work. Yeah. We, we really didn't know how big we were until we started the Room to Live campaign. And uh, at that time, and I'm not sure what we've seen now, but we have uh, 130 to gusts of 150 employees. Mm -hmm. At that point, we were, you know, just behind Save On and, and the city. Um, we have uh, affordable housing in Rosemont uh, and also in Fairview. We have community living sites where we're doing 24-7 care for uh, people who are severely disabled. Um, and I should thank Janice, who's one of our strongest supporters for Room to Live. Thank you very much. That was great. Um, we have the Advocacy Center, and you'll, you've probably read some of the articles in the paper about uh, uh, the work that they do. What else do we do? Stephanie can help me out. Um, uh, the um, Custom Fit. Custom Fit is a, a work and coaching uh, program for uh, adults with developmental disabilities. So these, this gives people with developmental Developmental disabilities, the ability to communicate, uh, to, um, uh, sorry, I'm getting so excited, <laughs> um, to contribute both socially and economically in their community. And it's, it's, it's worked out better and it's growing. It's really growing quickly. And Kootenai Seniors? Kootenai Seniors is uh, our, probably our latest uh, addition. It came out of the Osprey financed. Um, Sorry, I'm on, I'm on the Osprey board as well. <laughs> there was a program that Osprey started to bring all the community, the seniors community service providers together. And from that, we actually uh, were able to, to take on some of the projects that it developed. So we're, uh, community, uh, uh, Kootenai Seniors is going to be uh, doing a bunch of programs and hopefully it will be housed uh, soon in the new Lakeside mm -hmm. uh, place over on Nelson Avenue. <coughs> and uh, Ron, the hub. The hub. The <laughs> hub is where we, we sort of hold the management. We hold the funds for it. Um, but it's, it's a joint effort of uh, uh, two or three of our sister agencies as well. So we can't take full credit for that. But it's been a vision of a lot of the executive directors of the social service agencies to provide a place where, where people who, who live on the street, live rough, um, have a place to go and create community. Uh, we can provide them with services. And it's really kind of calmed that population down in town. So it, it's, been a, it's been a great success. And we've received funding that's going to take us on for, I think, a couple, of, a couple more years. So. And stepping zones. Stepping stones. Don't forget <laughs> stepping stones. <laughs> stepping stones and the North, the North Shore, where we've been able to house people during the pandemic. Um, this is for this is for people seeking shelter from the storm. Um, it's it's incredible how quickly people's lives can turn. So it's great to have a place where someone can have twenty four seven care. Um, especially during the COVID, uh, again, an awful lot of people who can be a challenge in the community were, once they're safely housed, once they are safe, secure, they get 
uh, some meals, um, they really become comfortable in where they are and, and they calm right down. And I think that's, that's, uh, that's an awful lot. I think that's it. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's an awful that's lot. That's a lot. And thanks, Ron, for, for mentioning that. And I think the last piece that Ron touched on, no more important than the rest of the work that is being done, was uh, the provincial government, to their credit, did an incredibly good job this year of offering funds up to help house people in, <clears throat> in the motels and hotels that were empty because of COVID in the early days. And we were able to get people off the street and get them housed, as Ron said. And, yeah. it, uh, at, the, and at the beginning, um, there was a lot of anxiety. How is it going to work? Was it going to be successful? We have a, a problem on our hands. But actually, Ron, you can probably fill in the blanks there. So, Well, uh, not to go on too long, but we really have to acknowledge BC Housing. They have uh, a very large uh, bureaucracy, it's tended to move very slowly. But when COVID came along, they were the fat. They were the first. They were there with the first. They had the innovative ideas. They had innovative funding. Um, they helped us a lot with Ward Street Place. Um, they've helped us an awful lot. Well, Hall, Hall, um, Hall Street Place and Lakeside Place. Again, BC Housing. They're right there with us. We've we've created a huge amount of trust uh, with them. They're very anxious to carry on developing. They see the potential in Nelson and Trail and Castlegar, but especially Nelson, the, the work especially that Jenny has done. She's created a lot of trust, and they're keen to do projects in communities, especially Nelson. So hopefully there'll be more in the future. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. Thank you, okay. Ron. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ron, take your check from in front of the certificate. Oh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ginger. Thank you. And thanks to Stephanie for all the work she does for Nelson. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Well, before we get to Joy, I'm, she's going to add a bit to this puzzle that we have tonight. And of course, the success of our community, uh, we can stand on the shoulders of these organizations that have an incredible platform that they've built over generations in our community. Like, I can remember going back, Ron, when uh, Judy Gaten was a counselor here. I'm not sure if you were involved at that time, but that's a long time ago when uh, she started on the, on the housing development in our community for people that are the most vulnerable. And, you know, that platform just kept building. And the, the neat thing about it, whether it's the gardens or the baseball diamond or housing, is that when we put applications forward now for grants, for the most part, we're successful because granting organizations knows that we deliver, that our associations, organizations, and community clubs like the Rotary, etc., they deliver when they take on a project. They don't walk away from it. They don't leave it half done, etc. So... Joy, you've got the next piece okay. now. The City of Nelson and its Cultural Development Committee established the Cultural Ambassador Award in recognition of local individual artists, groups, or collectives who have achieved a high standard of excellence in their artistic discipline and who are active not only in Nelson's arts and cultural community, but extend their talents to other communities and countries. Previous ambassadors, our author Roz Ney, performer Marilyn Hatfield, singer Alison Gervin, dancer Slava Doval, writer Eileen Delahanty Perks, visual artist Ian Johnston, musician Bessie Wapp, filmmaker Amy Bohegan, dancer Hiramoda Ida, author Anda Grace, fiber artist Angelica Worth, and the Corazon Youth Choir. This year's award was adjudicated by an external jury of previous cultural ambassadors and comes with an $1,000 honorarium. The City of Nelson and the CBC are pleased to present the 2022 Cultural Ambassador Award to author Jane Byers. One up, Jane. Thank you. To date, 
Jane has published two poetry collections, Stealing Effects and Acquired Community, and a memoir, Small Courage. Numerous poems, essays, and excerpts in these books have been featured in magazines, journals, and anthologies, with Acquired Community winning the prestigious Golden Crown Literary Award for Poetry in the US. In all of her essays, poems, and prose, Jane brings a feminist, LGBTQ, and transracial adoptive family lens, always seeking to build empathy. In 2022, Jane will be launching her new book, Work to Live, which examines the role of work and employment through the lens of her professional career as an ergonomist. Additionally, Jane will be an anchor artist in the Nelson and District Arts Council, collaborative art project Outside the Box, partnering with a local dancer, and a pianist in the Selkirk College Music Program. We're thrilled to formally acknowledge Jane's accomplishments, both as a writer and valued contributor to our community. Welcome our 2022 Cultural Ambassador. <laughs> And once again, there's... Oh, oh you got the whole wow. name. <laughs> <laughs> this is your tax dollars at work. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thanks. Oh, uh, can I take this off? Sure. Or not? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 sure you could. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> no, director. Okay. I know you're a writer, but maybe you'd like to say a few words. Yeah, just a few. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, I'm delighted to uh, accept this. I feel like I, um, I love this place that we live, and I've been an uh, unofficial ambassador for a lot of years, because every time I go to a festival or a, you know, do a reading elsewhere, I'm always singing Nelson's praises. I, I want to thank the Cultural Development Committee and I want to thank Council because I, I know from sitting on a board myself that you all work very hard to make our city a better place and I really appreciate that. And I appreciate that we have a um, uh, title, uh, you know, Cultural Ambassador every year. It's, it's great. I think, it, you know, um, good thing that we represent our city out there in, in the world. And um, yeah, I just... Uh, also want to say that uh, I think we might be the first household where both spouses yeah. have one cultural <laughs> ambassador. <laughs> My wife Amy. Oh, Chris. 2013 or 14, one of those. <laughs> and um, it was her mother that uh, gave her a sash, and I believe started the tradition oh, yeah. of yeah. us yeah. getting yeah. sashes. Oh. So. Amy, come on up. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, it's okay. It's Chase. <laughs> it's Chase. Anyway, yeah. thank you very much. Well, so now before, the goal is the kids. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Keith. Now the goal is all the kids will have to go. <laughs> <laughs> got a long-term goal there. Jen's yeah. Jen's uh, commitment to our community doesn't end here. She's also a member of our police board, mm -hmm. and I have to thank her personally because she brings incredible, thoughtful uh, conversation to the table, and something that we needed uh, at our board table. So thank you for That's taking awesome. on that role and responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. Travis, so you're here with your family. They're, you're welcome to bring them up if you wish, if they're not too tired. Or, you're okay? You're good to watch. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Travis, so, uh, come, on, come on down. <laughs> I hope you didn't write a speech. Oh, you did, yeah. <laughs> well, good to see you. Thanks for having me. Um, Travis, family's here in the front row as usual, supporting him. Um, I know that Travis, uh, we all know Travis does a lot of mountain biking and, and I'm sure the support doesn't end by just coming to this event to be, your wife and family's been behind you for a long time, Travis, and you're yeah. in following your passion. Council is pleased to announce that uh, selecting Travis Harp as our city's 2022 sports ambassador. Travis is a long time Nelsonite and established himself as an athlete, coach, organizer and a value, value member of our community. Travis has worked in sports and recreation industry for 20 years. He has worked for local businesses such as Jarek Cycle and Ski, 
and has excelled as an individual athlete compete, competing in mountain biking. Competitions around Canada and North America. Travis is often involved in organizing some of Nelson's premier sports events. He has helped organize the Fat Tire Festival. Is that still happening No, Travis? It took a break with COVID. Yeah, with yeah. COVID, yeah. It'll come back. As well as the trail running events and the, um, what's that one there? The Tackle the, tackle the Toad? Trail, yeah, trail running. Yeah, trail, running and, trail yeah. yeah. and the Terry Fox Run. Travis has shared his love of sports with the city's youth and he coaches mountain biking and ta taught Nordic skiing. Although COVID has been a challenging time for many traveling athletes, Travis has managed to compete in a 100-kilometer gravel bike race in Quebec this year. That event he won in his age category. Nice. Travis checks all the boxes for what Council is looking for in a sports ambassador. He's involved in competition, coaching, organizing events, and has a long history of doing so. He has grown his career here in Nelson and has led, has led opportunities to compete across Canada where he is a champion his champion Nelson's reputation as a sports recreation hub. City Council is pleased to recognize you tonight, Travis, as a sports ambassador for 2022. <laughs> You got your stuff for a plaque and ginger. You got a picture. Thank you, sir. Mix it up just to keep it. New tire for your bike. New tire. Bikes. Bikes. Thank you. Ginger, I think Travis's wife wants to get you take a picture. Or we can get it. Okay, thanks, Toby. Do the real picture. Thanks, Toby. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. All right, Travis, there you go. Here's your cool. chance to make your speech. Yeah, John, said, thanks, everybody. Thanks, Council. Thanks, Mayor Dooley. Um, and City Nelson, really honored to live here, like Jane said, and probably everybody else. Um, I'd like to thank my wonderful wife, Toby, and my awesome kids, Caden and Haley, for lots of their, their support um, when I'm out training for bike races and working on bikes and organizing events. She's been there through all of that. Um, I'd also like to thank the co-workers I've been with through the years in Nelson um, and my mentors and my friends uh, for supporting me through my adventures. Um, I moved to Nelson in my 20s and it was a real eye-opener um, to see all these new sports and activities right out our back door. We're pretty blessed to have it right out our back door. Mm -hmm. um, the trails and the skiing and the biking yeah. and the swimming and endless. But um, meeting, uh, mo live, moving here, meeting world class athletes, trainers, photographers, videographers, and the backcountry enthusiasts is what helped inspire me to achieve my goals. Um, I owe a lot to a neighbor growing up that would make us run around a playground and we'd get stickers for little sticker books that we had when we were kids. And if you got one for second, third, you'd get stickers for your sticker book. So she, mo she really motivated us to go hard and train, practice. Um, it's been a lot of fun helping the community over the years um, with sports equipment purchases, trail information, coaching, cheering at Leafs games, and organizing the events that I've been a part of and had awesome teamwork doing that. Um, I hope to see this role get bigger, as uh, become a bigger position in City Council. <clears throat> we have so much talent and a wide range of venues here in Nelson um, to bring back things like the Siswagen Triathlon or the Summit to Summit event. Um, let's keep people in Nelson moving. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to acknowledge uh, a couple of peers um, at this moment, Dave Stevens, who just did amazing in a running event down in Colorado, I think. Sam Cooch, who uh, was male athlete, snow skier of the year. Yeah. Kurt Sorge just won the crazy big jumps, Red Bull Rampage in Utah, Virgin, Utah. Um, Chandrima Lavoie, who is one of Nelson's top free skiers. Um, Estelle Pantiero, who is a semi-pro snowboarder. Um, father with Jeff Pantiero at Baldface. Just uh, some females um, that I really um, hope to see in this position soon too. Uh, a friend of mine, Jenny Lehman, who took on a mountain bike racing um, schedule for the year and she had a couple cut short, but she did really well. And she traveled around to get to those events and trained really hard for them. And I was really proud of her. 
Um, this town is gold, and I'm really proud to live here and excited to bring back more to the community in 2022. And the reward for hard work is more hard work. <laughs> <laughs> go Nelson, go. <laughs> Thanks very Thanks much, Travis. Thanks Appreciate very it. much. Yeah. Take care. Yeah. Right, of course. Good to see you guys. Happy holidays. Okay, folks. Thanks, everybody. Thanks to Councillor Woodward, Councillor Page, Councillor Morrison, okay. Councillor Lockenberg, Councillor Charwood, and Councillor Renwick. Thanks. Merry Christmas on behalf of all of us, and celebrate your holidays safely. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Mayor? Yeah, to... <laughs> Motion to adjourn? Yeah. Just one right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're on to me. You're on to me, Cal. the last one. It was like a quick draw. Quick it draw. was. Oh, yeah. I see him going yeah. for it. <laughs> she, yeah. Lean in to block she, him. She's been waiting since halfway yeah, since more. Travis got up there to do that. <laughs> I'm like, oh, he's the last one. <clears throat> Jesse.